Hi there, I'm Ashley. You're probably wondering who the hell I am. So let me tell you. A few weeks ago, I was building a controller for growing mushrooms, and I needed a way to heat the mushroom chamber. So I found a Rob Zinc, conductive ink, and I used that to build a heating element. It turned out, and I was amazed to discover this, that Rob was in the same town as me. And it, like most of you, I was enthralled by the videos he posted. So I came down here, and after a couple of weeks sitting outside meditating, they finally let me inside. Now I get to hang around with Steve and Rob, and I'm part of FWG. I'm going to be talking about energy, and mainly electrical things. In my first bit video, I'd like to describe the dual thief circuit which is essentially can be used for energy harvesting or capturing low voltage energy sources and converting them into voltages that are useful to use. One of the first concepts we need to know in order to understand the dual thief is that when a current is passed through a coil of wire or any wire, it induces an electromagnetic field. If we wrap a load of wire around an iron nail, in this case, all of the fields will align and will get a much stronger electromagnetic field. The electromagnetic field will induce a magnetic field in the iron. Now, that happens whenever current flows through the wire. When we turn the current off, that induced magnetic field has to go somewhere. It goes back into the wire and turns back into electrical current in, a, in the opposite direction to which the field was induced. In this way, by energizing a coil, we can create a magnetic field which then collapses and gives us a spike of energy. And we're going to use this principle in order to light an LED. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate how a coil of wire and an electromagnetic field collapsing can be used to drive an LED. What we've got here is a battery, a 1.5 volt battery, connected up through a coil and through a little switch. And I've connected up this LED in such a way that when the field induced in this coil collapses, the current will push, be pushed across the LED and cause light to be emitted. Now, as you can see, at the moment, even though we have a 1.5 volt battery connected, the LED is not lit. That's because the LED is a diode and requires a forward voltage of approximately 2.3, 2.4 volts in order to light. This will allow us to light the LED without uh, having a 2.5 volt supply. And so if I connect this and disconnect it, you can actually see the LED is flashing. This is whenever the coil collapses, the voltage builds up and it bridges the gap and emits light. Briefly explain the circuit. If we've got our 1.5 volts up here, our zero volts here, this is the coil. This is our light emitting diode. There should be some little squiggly lines for light coming off. And here is our switch. When we close the switch, an electromagnetic field is built up in the coil and a magnetic field is built up in the iron nail. Now, the left-hand rule tells us that which direction the field builds up in. In this case, we want the field to build up so it's pointing in this direction, so that when it collapses, the current flows in this direction. So this is coiled in, a, in that way in order to cause that to happen. And all we're doing in that case is simply switching this on and off to get the LED to flash. What we're gonna do next is turn the LED on and off really fast to see if we can get it to look like it's on all the time. So as promised, we're now going to switch the coil on and off very quickly. And in order to do that, what, instead of the switch, I've connected up an electromechanical relay, which is just a switch controlled by a solenoid. In this case, another coil, which is acting as a magnet and pulling the switch closed. Now, in order to switch it off on and off very quickly, I'm going to connect it to a potentiometer controlled 555 timer. The 555 timer creates a sequence of pulses which will switch the relay on and off and the potentiometer will allow me to control the frequency of those pulses. So, 
So now, if you look at the electromechanical relay, you can see it switching on and off. And you can see the light flicking on and off. If I change the potentiometer and increase the frequency, the flickering of the light reduces as there's almost no off period. And that's about as far as I can go with this relay without it latching on permanently. A bit like that. But as you can see, the light is essentially on continuously now. Now in the dual thief circuit, which I'm going to explain shortly, the oscillation is around 20,000 times a second. So you will not see any flickering at all. The next concept you need to understand the dual thief is the transformative effect, or transformer. In this circuit, we have battery 1.5 volts going through a coil, which we can switch on and off as before. And as we saw before, the back EMF from the collapsing magnetic field can be used to drive an LED. Now, the transformer works by wrapping another coil around the same nail. And then the magnetic field induced in the nail is shared between both coils. When the, co when the EMF field collapses, the energy is then shared between both coils. In this way, we can transfer energy from this circuit on the left to this circuit on the right, which is directly connected to the LED. So without any physical connection, we can drive the LED through the transformer. And Back to the lab again. We've got the same setup as before when we had a nail with a single coil around it. But this time, we've got a nail with two coils around it. So it's a transformer. The first coil will collapse and energize the second coil as well, which is going to drive our LED. If I now connect up the oscillator, so we can switch it on and off very quickly, again we can see the same effect. So I can light the LED just by switching on and off the transformer very quickly. Before I go on and explain the dual thief circuit, I need to explain one more thing, which is an electrical component called a transistor. As you saw in the segments before, we need a switch in order to switch on and off very quickly in order to make our LED light. Transistor is just an electrical switch. And on the circuit on the board here, I'll show how a transistor is used to drive an LED. In this case, we've got three volts, because we want the LED to be on. This is a symbol for a transistor. And the transistor is controlled by the base. If we flip this switch to on, then current will flow through the base, and this will cause the transistor to switch on, which allows current then to flow from, from the collector to the emitter in much larger quantities, as the base current amplifies the current that flows through the transistor. But in our case, we're just going from a current of zero to its um, saturation current, so it's completely on. All that's really important here is that if we apply a voltage to this base, we can switch on and off the transistor. Let's illustrate how the transistor operates in practice. We've got the same circuit that was drawn on the board here. And what we're going to have is our current flowing through here, and we're going to have it flowing through the transistor and through the LED. There's nothing on at the moment because there's no current flowing into the base. If I connect the base up, then we get current flowing through the base, which allows current to flow through the transistor and light the LED. The resistors are only there to stop the components burning out. Okay. So finally, as promised, I'm going to explain to you how the dual thief circuit works. You're already familiar with all the components required to understand it. In this circuit diagram, up here we've got the transformer. The dots indicate the direction of the windings, which is important because that determines the direction of the electromotive force that's induced when we pass the current through. The reason for that will become clearer later on. Down here we have our transistor, and we've got the light emitting diode here. So how does this work? Now, what we need to do is switch on and off this coil very quickly, so that it causes an electromotive force turn this LED on and off, quick enough that it looks like it's on. So what happens? 
When we turn this rail on, this 1.5 volt rail, current flows through this coil, through the resistor, and into the base of the transistor. This starts turning the transistor on. Because the transistor is being turned on, current can now flow through this coil, the secondary coil. Now, this, these coils are both wound around the same nail. So the, the EMF field that's induced by driving current through this coil induces a magnetic field in the nail, which is shared by this coil. Now we wind this coil in such a way that the changing magnetic field induces a current flow in this coil, which is in the direction we want it to go, which is in the direction towards the base of the transistor. So that's why the winding direction is important. In practice, when you do this, you can just, as long as they're opposite, you can connect it up. If it doesn't work, just switch one of them around. Now, so we turn it on, current flows through the base. Switching the transistor on, current then flows through the secondary coil, inducing a magnetic field. The changing magnetic field induces a current in the primary. This increases the current that flows through the base, which in turn increases the current that flows through the transistor. This causes a feedback loop which causes the transistor to very rapidly turn all the way on. Once the transistor is turned completely on, there is no longer a changing magnetic field. We have a static field, but only for an instant. Because what happens is, since we no longer have a changing magnetic field, there's no longer a current induced in our primary winding. Because there's no current induced in it, we, the current through the base reduces. The current reducing through the base means that the current through the secondary also reduces, which means that our magnetic field collapses slightly because down to the point where our current is. Now this means that the current in the magnetic field in this coil also collapses. And when it collapses, it's in the opposite direction to when we induce the field. So before, originally, when the current was flowing through here and the transistor was turning on, the, the current that was induced through this coil was adding to the base of the transistor and turning it hard on. But now that this is collapsing, the back EMF is in the opposite direction, which means that we're reducing the current into the base, which causes the base to start to turn off, and the transistor starts to turn off. Because the transistor is turning off, the current through here reduces even more, which causes further collapse of the field, further reverse induction here, which causes less current to through, flow through the base, and the whole thing collapses. Once it's off again, current can start flowing forward again, again inducing a current in the secondary, and through this feedback loop, these, this transistor turns on and off very rapidly. And the turning on and off rapidly allows, when this field collapses, to drive the LED. So that's how the dual thief works. Now, what's crucial about this circle, absolutely fundamental, is that the LED will not light with a 1.5 volt battery. So the whole point of the dual thief is that we can use a 1.5 volt battery or a lower voltage source to light something which needs a higher voltage, in this case about 2.2, 2.3, something like that. This is because when the electric field collapses, the back EMF generates a voltage spike, which is enough to drive the LED. And the faster that collapses, the bigger the voltage spike. Now, Rob might do a video later about how this interacts with the battery, how the back EMF interacts with the battery, because it's quite interesting. But one more crucial thing I want to say is that we haven't used anything special here. You'll see a lot of dual thief circuits where they use a toroid, they use some kind of Pythagorean perfect shape, but none of that's necessary. We've just used a nail here. A nail, a bit of wire, and a transistor, and an LED. And that's it. There's no mystery to it. You've seen how it works now. This video, of course, is to show the dual thief working. And so I've wired one up here on a piece of breadboard. We've got a 1.5 volt battery connected up the same way in the circuit diagram. And then we have two coils of wire wound around a simple nail 
and one of the coils um, goes to the base of the transistor and the other coil goes to the collector of the transistor in the same way it was shown on the board. And this is oscillating so quickly that it looks like the LED is on. It actually oscillates in this configuration around 20,000 times a second. So there you go. That's how you drive an LED with a forward voltage over 2 volts with a battery that's only 1.5 volts. Now this circuit will go down to about 0.7, maybe less, because the transistor base only turns on at 0.7 volts. So any below that, and you can no longer drive the circuit. In practice, it tends to go a bit lower, but in, this is, you, you can play around with it and see what happens. Okay, fantastic. Now you know how a jewel thief works. And why is this interesting? The reason this is interesting is because there are many circumstances where we want to collect energy from the ambient environment, from solar cells, from other kind of generators where the voltage is very low and it's kind of useless to us. So by using the dual feed, we can step up the voltage to a useful voltage. Another area which is useful is in capacitors. Capacitors, when they discharge, discharge to very low, they'll discharge from whatever you charge them to, all the way down to zero volts. If you want to use all the energy in the capacitor, then we need a way of capturing the very last bits of energy in there when the voltage drops down. Thank you for watching and I uh, hope you found that useful.